Hi there, Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make weekly travel videos where we document our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. For those of you who've been following along on our journey, you'll know that for the past few months, we've been sharing with you our experience of visiting Spain in the summer of 2021. And in this video, we are continuing along on that and reaching the end of our time in Spain before heading to Portugal. Specifically, at this point in our trip, we were renting a car from Madrid and driving around northern and central Spain. If you watched our last video, you'll know that we had just wrapped up in the northern regions of Asturias and Cantabria, whereas in this video, we're going to take you a little bit farther along the northern coast to the absolutely beautiful and dynamic region of the Basque region, which is such a unique and special part of Spain that you do not want to miss it. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please do consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and giving a tip via the super thanks button if you feel so inclined, because it really does help support this channel. All right, so let's dive into what we did in the Basque region. First things first though, while driving from Cantabria to the Basque region, we actually did a brief stop in the city of Burgos that I just wanna to touch upon because it is a cool town to check out if you are in this region of Spain. Burgos is an important step in the Camino de Santiago, which is also known as the Pilgrim's Way of St. James that I mentioned in some of our Galicia videos. And Burgos in particular is notable for the many historic and religious buildings that it hosts. The most recognizable landmark in Burgos is Burgos Cathedral. Burgos Cathedral is made in the French Gothic architectural style and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Unfortunately, when we visited, the cathedral itself was actually closed because they were having a big bike race when we were there. So it was closed at the time that we were there, but we still got to enjoy walking around the outside of it and just enjoying some of the exterior views and the surrounding town of the cathedral. Another thing we noticed in Burgos is that there's actually quite a lot of cool street art to enjoy, which I did not expect to see. So that's a fun little tidbit as well if you're visiting Burgos. Another spot we'd recommend checking out would be Burgos Castle, which historically was actually an Alcázar, and it became a major fortification and residence of the kings of Castilla. Following the accession of the Habsburg family, the castle lost its importance as a royal residence, and during the French occupation on June 15, 1813, the French army decided to leave the castle of Burgos, destroying it with explosives as they left, which is why it's in its current destroyed state. The views you get from here are quite nice of the town, and it is kind of a cool thing to see the castle walls. We finished our time in Burgos by visiting the historic city gate and visiting the historic bridge, which is called Puente de Santa Maria. All right, so after our brief visit in Burgos, we proceeded to the Basque country. For those of you who aren't all that familiar with the Basque country, this is a really interesting and awesome region to visit if you get the chance. It is actually a very unique culture. It is very different from the rest of Spain, both in terms of its history, its culture, as well as even its language. Technically, the Basque region is this particular part of northern Spain, as well as parts of southwestern France. In particular, what makes this really an interesting language and culture is that, like I said, it's quite distinct to the point that the language that they speak, which is called Basque, is completely unrelated to any known language in the world today. It is what linguists call a language isolate, which means that there are no other languages that have any known relation to it. So such a unique language and culture to experience. The first place that we visited in the Basque country really exemplifies how different it is from the rest of Spain. And that is the absolutely awesome city of Vilma. 
Bilbao. Bilbao is often considered the de facto capital of the Basque country, and it is really a great spot to visit in that it feels so different from the rest of Spain. It's really a nice city to walk around and just enjoy the unique aspects of it. The buildings look totally different, and it has actually quite a lot of really fun street art. In fact, if I had anything to say about Bilbao, I would say that it has a very artistic vibe to it. So it is really a great place to check out. Other than just enjoying walking around and wandering around the streets of Bilbao, there are a number of things to see as well. The first one that we went to is what is called the Ribera Mercatua, which is also in Spanish referred to as the Mercado de la Ribera. And this is a historic covered market with a wide array of foods to try. And in particular, we enjoyed the famous pinchos, which are famous in the Basque country as well as the rest of Spain, but they originate from here. I have to admit that in my personal opinion, I know it might be different for lots of other people, but I have to say that I found pinchos was my favorite type of food that I had in all of Spain. It might be that a core component of what pinchos are is that they have to be served on bread, and I love bread, so every type of pincho is gonna have some variety of bread of some sort, so what's not to love there? After stuffing ourselves at lunch with pinchos, we proceeded to check out some cultural sites. And specifically, the first thing we did was walk through the city and along the river towards the famous Frank Gehry designed Guggenheim Museum of Bilbao. Now, we didn't actually go inside because we had read different things about it and just decided that at this point in our trip, we didn't want to spend the money on it. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't visit it because the outside is really awesome and really enjoyable to just go people watching as well as the different outdoor art displays that they have around the museum. After we were finished walking around the museum, we decided to take the Archanda funicular to the summit of the nearby Archanda mountain which has a park, several restaurants, a hotel, a sports complex, and offers panoramic views of the city. This is a great spot to go if you want to have a bit of a break from the city and want to have more of greenery as well as views of the city. This is probably the best spot to go if you want to get an above view of Bilbao. The following day, we ventured out of Bilbao and we decided to venture out and see some of the natural beauty of the Basque region. We took a morning drive to the town of Sumaya, which is a town that is right on the water. It has two beaches, which are of interest to geologists because they're situated among the longest set of continuous rock strata in the world. This is really a great spot to go if you want breathtakingly beautiful and unique, distinct rock formations right on the water. I can't think of many places in the world that I've been to that look like this. This is really a class of its own. I did not know what I was in store for. So cool and so fun to walk around and see. In particular, you can enjoy some really nice walks along the beautiful Debe Sumaya UNESCO Geopark, which has some of the most striking rock formations and cliffs that we've honestly ever seen in our entire time of traveling. So by far a hidden gem that I had never heard of before, but was truly gobsmacked to see in person. So cool. Our final destination that we visited in the Basque region of Spain was visiting the city of San Sebastián, or as it's referred to in the Basque language, Donostia. After parking our car outside the town center, we enjoyed a leisurely exploration walking along the beach in the town center itself. We walked to the top of Urgul Hill, which offers stunning panoramic views of the town, as well as La Concha Bay. The hill is topped by a historic stronghold, as well as the Mota Castle. The site later added a chapel and a conspicuous 12 meter long sculpture of Jesus in 1950. This is a really great spot to get some really nice panoramic views of the city, as well as the beach and the water. Such a beautiful spot to spend some time when you're visiting San Sebastián. Afterwards, we walked along the beach promenade to the pretty Miramar Jauregia, a stately 1893 palace and once summer home of the Queen of Spain.
All right, everyone, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you were as excited to see the things that are in the Basque region as I was experiencing them, because honestly, I have to say, this region totally caught me by surprise. I had no idea that I was going to enjoy the Basque region as much as I did. It's just not really a region that I personally heard that much about before visiting Spain, but that's why I felt truly privileged to get to visit this part of Spain and really take my time exploring Spain. That's why you can't limit your experience in Spain to just one particular region if you want to really understand all of the different varieties of culture and history that Spain has to offer. So I would say that this is probably one of my favorite parts of all of Spain. I'm not even joking. It was such an awesome place to see and I can't wait to visit it again. If you enjoyed tagging along with us, please do consider giving this video a like, a comment, subscribe, or even if you feel so inclined, leaving a tip with the super thanks button. And stay tuned for our next video, where we will take you to the Pyrenees region of Spain, visiting Navarra and Aragon, which are these really pretty areas of Spain that offer a lot of great hiking opportunities. So check it out with me, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.